Praise the Lord, all you nations. Lift him up, all you peoples. For the Lord is great and mighty. Amen. The Lord is good. All right. So there's a story that uh, Pastor Kimode told us earlier, and I'd like to repeat it um, partly for uh, record purposes. He said there's, he has a friend in this city, and um, he invited some m- m- uh, music ministers or musicians, I don't know what, what they are, to come to his church. They had a program, and they had agreed. He printed his flyers, printed his posters, and began to do his advertisement for his program with them featuring on the um, advertisement materials. Except that one of Nigeria's big churches with their headquarters in Abuja, the headquarters church, right? In Abuja, invited the same group to come on that same day. And they informed this man that the breakthrough they have been praying for has arrived. So they need, therefore, to cancel the agreement they made with him, the promise they made to him, they will not be able to fulfill it because they cannot let that breakthrough pass them by. And of course, they went to the big church and ministered, and that was really a breakthrough for them. And since then, greater doors have opened, similar doors have opened, and they have continued to minister. Now, I don't know the group, so I'm not talking about anybody. I heard the story just like you heard it when we were praying earlier, okay? I heard it as you were hearing it, I was, I was also hearing it, just that he knows what's going on in all those circles in Nigeria. So if I need any gist, anything happen, I just gonna have you heard? If at the day I found out that, I was the one that told him that, uh, uh, the, what's the name of the man of Desta? Not that they hear me, I mean, Desta International. Marcos uh, Lamb, yes, that he had passed on. I was the one that told him, I was shocked. I thought he knew all the news in Nigeria, in, in Nigeria and the world, okay? Anyway, he's one that knows all these things. So I, mean, I was hearing the thing just as you were hearing it, too, just making um, light of that. Now, the point I'm making is this. When he heard it, if, when he said it, you heard him saying that was a temptation, and I shouted, yes, that was a temptation. And they failed woefully. I don't know the people, I'm not criticizing any individual. But so that you will know, they failed terribly. Slam dunk failure. They were tempted, both with good and with evil at the same time. And they failed. They failed. They failed. I'm so sorry, they failed. Many people called it an opportunity. It was a trap. They fell into a ditch. They did not realize it. I've seen it many times. There's another man I knew, a church, a small church, invited him for their maybe Thanksgiving program, and he accepted the minister. Then the headquarter church of that church invited him. So he called the young, younger guy and said, ah, our guy, because they both know, the, of course, the big boss, I cannot refuse to honor a guy's invitation. And the person telling me who was the pastor of another branch of that particular denomination in this nation, said that uh, he knows what he was thinking about. The honorarium, the small branch, how much would they give him? The bigger branch, pepper will rest, like we say. Serious thing will drop. He gave the excuse of honor to dishonor somebody else. (laughs) Again, he failed. He failed. Temptations come to us all the time. What happened to me recently? A man who had preached for once before, and he was very generous in telling me thank you, called me a few days ago and said, please, sir, I've not been to their place in a while, but I'll be willing to come. So I said, what are the dates? He told me. I said, ah, it's a clash with my convention. Now, in my convention, I'm not a guest minister. Bear in mind, I am not a guest minister. I am not, I'm just going to attend. If my convention costs me money, because we all contribute. 
And I don't even like preaching there. If I didn't even know they had noticed until my sister Momian said one day that what is the problem? I said, what do you mean what's the problem? That she has noticed that I don't like preaching when we come for a local. Many people will not realize it. That's the truth. I didn't know people had noticed. I'm like, well, let's shine the way that let's. I said, because everywhere I go, I preach. This place I come is like home. I just want to sit down and be blessed. But many times it falls upon me to preach some of the meetings. It was when she pointed out to me that behind me, the Jesus had gone around that Pastor Banky doesn't like preaching when he comes for local food. I didn't know they had noticed. And get it, I was president for eight straight uninterrupted years. It's a place where I have influence till now. I handed over to our current president, who's Pastor Courage, who you all know. The convention was going to hold. And right next to, that is the same city, where this other invitation was coming from. I just told the man, please let me check my calendar. And they just lapped over each other, but like one day, I fired him a text message, I'm so sorry. It's clashing with my convention. Now, it was after I had told him that I told my wife, I said, wait, oh. <laughs> it did not even cross my mind that I could refuse to, at my convention. That I, it's the same city. I could quickly tell her, okay, brethren, uh, please, I have a place. I will just drive there quickly, go and preach one session, come back, mingle with my brethren, go and preach. I said, no. The convention was fixed first. Be honest with you, let me not lie to you. God is my witness, let's not lie. The only reason I would have done the opposite is I know man, when I finish preaching, these guys, they know how to honor people. And some people, they will finish, you finish preaching for them, they say, God will bless you. I said, but I did not know before. <laughs> I said, we did not know. <laughs> remember your friend who said that I did preach for free? Remember that guy? I preached for him once. They didn't even give me a cup of water. I'm not exaggerating. Not a bottle of water. I said, please, take and drink. Oh my, just walking. What was my problem? I hope I blessed you. That's my own issue. But these people are not like that. But it didn't cross my mind that I would quickly leave my convention, go and preach for them, and come back. No. Why the man of God text me and say, Ah, I'm sorry, sir. It's clashing with my convention. He said, Can you find another time? I said, Go ahead. He said, Okay, he'll get back to me when he found another time. In fact, now that I'm talking to you, and I realize that I have not replied his last message. So when he told that story, I shook my head. I said, wow, these people, they failed. They failed. They did not know that they failed. There is everything you want to enter in life, there are doors. And one of the things they will show you first in life it's the wrong door. Yes. When God wants to bless you, let's use material things as an example. Financially, the first opportunity you will be given will be a wrong one. If God wants to bless you politically, the first opportunity you will be given will be a wrong one. It will take... Now, Holy Spirit at that time, it doesn't talk. You just be watching and say, the things you have learned... David said, my reigns does instruct me in the ninth seasons. There are things you've learned before. This is the ninth season. Let them talk to you. The first opportunity that you'll be given will be a wrong one. That is the reason why you will reject it will be a knowledge of righteousness. You know, I was reading about one famous Nigerian um, international Christian musician who left her husband of men about 12, 13, 14. I don't know how long she was married before she left the man. And I was reading the Kana story behind, you know, justifying how finally she became happy. All the years she had married to this man, she was not, now she's not happy. When I read the story, first, you were committed adultery in your heart before you even divorced this man. With the man she's now married to, I don't know whether they're still married to or not. This was some years ago, quite a number of years ago. When I looked at it, I said, God, you don't understand. God wanted to give you happiness. The first opportunity was a temptation. Will you get your happiness by divorcing this man? And I remember the man's testimony when he said irreconcilable differences. He said there was nothing irreconcilable except that she was determined to go. He said, I wanted her to stay, she was determined to go. 
Those were the irreconcilable differences we had. And I looked, I said, ha! So, you fell for the temptation and entered into happiness. Please don't forget this. The fact that you are disobeying God does not mean it will not work. You are disobeying God does not mean it will not work. Asa obeyed God for a long time. Then the 35th year of his reign, you know what happened to Asa? Ben Haddad, king of Syria, actually um, the king of um, Israel, hired, no, came against him, Basha. So he now went and hired Ben Haddad, king of Syria, to come and help him. And the prophet Hanani looked at him and said, Wow. Let's quickly read it. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Um, let me just read from the beginning. In the 36th year of Asa's reign, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming into Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out, now notice this, Asa brought out silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent them to Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you silver and gold, Go, break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. Verse 4. So ben Hadad listened to King Asa. Please, for time's sake, I may jump a few lines. And sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel. Verse 5. And it came about when Basha heard of it, that he ceased fortifying Ramah and stopped his work. Then King Asa brought all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber, with which Basha had been building. And with them he fortified Giba and Mizpah. Now let me pause for a moment here so we can pass some comments. He went to the house of God, took things that were dedicated, devoted to the Lord. And many times when Satan wants to tempt us, it's those things he will ask for. The time devoted to the Lord. The talents devoted to the Lord. The gifts devoted to the Lord. He will ask for them. Listen to me, when he has collected those things, many times he will, all right, give you, a, I mean, the Lord has arranged it like that. You will step into something greater than you have ever known, but which you do not realize God wanted to give you anyway. The way by which you enter into something in life is very important. So that's why David wandered in Psalm 8, enter through the gates of God. He didn't say don't enter or enter something. It's which gate? Enter by the narrow gate. Why? There is a common and easy and broad road, way. But then what you find at the end depends on the gate you enter through. Please don't forget this thing I've said. Don't ever forget. Please, I need to say this again. Temptations are called temptations because they are tempting. If they were not tempting, they wouldn't be called temptations. Like those people said, the breakthrough we have been praying for. That's why it is called a temptation. It would not have been called a temptation if a church, okay, the church invited you, inviting you, like you said, could gather about 250 people. Now, the one inviting you now can, could gather over 50,000. Currently, they gather almost 100,000. 250, not 1,000, individuals versus 100,000 individuals. Is massively different. The exposure, you understand? The honor, the popularity. Abba, listen to me, people of God, that is why it's called a temptation. If it was 100, uh, 1,000 to 250, your righteousness will have spoken up. I say, I promise these people, oh, because you don't check them. Mm. If it was even 2,000 to 250, just be righteous still. Let him who is righteous be righteous still. 50,000 people. 
breakthrough. You know, I started saying we didn't pray to God before we took the other invitation. We should have prayed. The Holy Spirit would have let us know we shouldn't have taken it. So let's repent of not praying. You start rationalizing it away. No, the Holy Spirit is new. He sets it up. It's supposed to be a temptation. It's supposed to be a temptation. Temptations are called temptations because they are tempting. If they were not tempting, why would they be called temptations? I don't know whether you're getting my point. If they were not tempting, they wouldn't be called temptations. I remember one day, my wife got into well, you know, chat group. She was there, so I was reading on her phone. Then we said that um, if uh, the day of your wedding, you are now invited to come and collect a contract of 350 million naira, what will you do? Come and see carnal people answer. Let me tell you how I reason. Maybe it will help you. Let's even assume is listen to what I want to say. It will surprise you. That person said 350 million naira contract, which means that you're not likely to make 250, 350 million naira from it at the end of the day. Do you get my point? 20% is heavy on such a big thing. It must be a government contract. If you are doing 20%, okay, there's a government contract. <laughs> Normally on such, I mean, what you're making is not, okay, let's even say 20%. So we're not even talking about anything more than 70 million here. So 70 million, that's you know, fighting for your soul. So you understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Now, even if it was 350 million naira, people think it is money. It's not about money. Christians, listen to this. Something else is at stake. Integrity is at stake. Your display of priorities in life is at stake. Your value system is being assessed. And there is a God in heaven who judges. Who will bring every action, not money, every action to judgment? You must know, let me say it again. Temptations are called temptations because they are tempting. If they were not tempting, they wouldn't be called temptations. So if something comes tempting, know it is a temptation. Ask yourself, is this a temptation for good or a temptation for evil? Because you must understand. At the end of the day, what is being assessed is a spiritual trait in your life. Are you faithful? It's being assessed. What's your prize? It's being assessed. Rabbi Zakar has told a story. I don't know whether it really happened, but it illustrates something perfectly. Or maybe it was made up to illustrate that point. But he said this happened. Well, this was the story. A woman, beautiful woman, was in a plane. And a man beside her turned to her. And you know, all the while he was staring at her, you know, take, you know, stealing some glances. And she noticed. Finally, he moved over to where she was, said, please, can I speak with you? He sat beside her. He could get a seat. The woman said, go ahead. I'm watching you for a while. And I think you're a very, very beautiful woman. And said, um, I was just thinking that when we arrive at our destination, whether you will be willing to spend the night with me. And the woman looked at him like, are you out of your mind? He said, wait, I'm a very, he said, I'm going to pay. The woman looked, what? He said, I'll give you a million dollars. The woman froze, looked at him, thought of a million dollars and began to analyze in her mind what a million dollars could do. Just one night. Then her life would change. Now listen to this. This is a very interesting story. So she finally, okay. She agreed. The man thanked her very much and returned to his seat. After a while, he came back again. He said, I've been thinking about it. I really can't afford a million dollars. Will you be willing to do the same for a hundred dollars? The woman said, what? What insult? What do you take me for? He said, that we have already established. What we are now negotiating is a price. That is the gist. What do you take me for? We have established it. There's no quarrel on that anymore. The issue now is that, how much? You're asking for a million dollars. Where will we get them? <laughs> and I want believers to know that is what is at stake. It's not money. 
In heaven, they are discussing how much are we going to pay to make this our servant lose his integrity. So Satan says, 50 million naira. And then just say, he won't take 50 million. Satan, I'll give you 70 million. And then just say, that guy. Satan, I'll give you 100 million. And then he goes, okay, go, test. So you offer him, okay, what, what integrity? He has printed wedding cards. He's told his father-in-law, they've agreed. This plan has been going on for months. Call him a week ahead of time. Miss your wedding. Get 200, well, we said 70 million naira, in effect. They are not checking for any other thing than, will he take it? And when he takes it, it's recorded. He will sell. He will sell his integrity. He will sell his faithfulness. He will sell his word. It's the amount of money that you are offering that matters. That is what the discussion is about. People think it's money. Those people that say door of opportunity open, the breakthrough we have been praying for, they just fell into a trap. Listen, you disobeyed God does not mean it did not work. You disobeyed God does not mean it will not work. In fact, it works quicker when you are headed for destruction. The one that doesn't work is God just showing you mercy. Say, Scott, too little. And sometimes we have to pray for ourselves like that. You heard me pray like that a lot of times. I say, may you not prosper in disobedience. It's an important prayer. It's not like, how do you mean? It, many people prosper in disobedience. Ben Haddad just did. Uh, sorry. Asa just did. Let's continue reading. At that time, verse 7, we are there now. Anani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Aram and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Aram has escaped out of your hand. It's not the army of the king of Israel that escaped, but I, want to talk, I don't want to talk about that now. Because God had engineered this temptation to deliver. Syria into his hands. Basha, king of Israel, was not the problem. The main enemy, the main strong power around that area at that time was Ben Haddad, king of Aram or Syria. The same, depending on the version you are using. And that was the person God, because every temptation leads to a lifting, even if you are not aware of it materially. That is when you pass the test. When you pass that test, if I like one man preached long ago, he said, promotion is the aftermath of temptation. That when you have been tested and you have proven yourself faithful, when you pass the test, you are promoted. Now, let me quickly add, the promotion is not always quickly visible. It may be something that will manifest in five years' time. It may be something that will manifest in 10 years' time. It may not manifest now. The one Satan gives manifests now. Those people here, doors open. God said, this door will not last. It will not last. It will not last. Why? The door by which you entered into this is not right. It's not the gate of righteousness. Open to me, David said in that Psalm 118, the gates of righteousness. He said, the righteous enter through that one. They are careful to seek it, to find it. Destinies are being negotiated every day on those kind of premises. How much are we going to give him to steal his destiny? What opportunities will we give to steal her destiny? Listen, in this life, let me just say it again. Don't put any... Don't, one day I said it to my brethren, they were a lot of argument. I said, God did not call us to succeed. He called us to obey. Yes. Success, what we call success, is a gift of God. So you struggle not in life to succeed. Not to succeed in this life, no. You don't struggle to succeed. You struggle to obey. And that's what I'm talking about today. Our prayer, like we said last time, is to be able to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respect, to bear fruit in every good work and to increase in the knowledge of God, not to succeed. The so-called success is an addition. It's a blessing. So anytime, listen, please never be afraid to lose material things. 
to lose money. Don't be afraid. What you should be afraid to lose is a spiritual substance. The value on your name. Your, you know, your appearance before God. Heaven's assessment of your faithfulness. Heaven's assessment of your character. That's what you need. You must be willing to, you know, you must be careful not to lose. You know, let me give this illustration many times. When you tell me that a, 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 a lecturer is sexually harassing a student, I've never understood why it's a problem. All my life. Thank God these days, they are catching them with uh, thank God for technology. But from the time I was young, I never knew why it would be a problem. You have to understand, some things are no-go areas. They are not negotiable. I, I hope I get my point. So if, if somebody comes to meet me and say, eh, and one man like that, I say, if I don't meet him somewhere, and that uh, I will not pass, I will say, go and meet him now. What's wrong with you? Why are we discussing? Where did you say you should meet him? Uh, hotel um, Enjoy Meta. Hey, go there now. You, do, do you need transport money? Should I? No, before they go and join me to conspiracy, I will not give you transport money. Go. I don't understand. I'm being honest with you. Please, I'm not trying to do over spiro, over righteous. I just always felt that. Is that a temptation? I would have thought that the temptation would have been that, sir, I want, to, I want him to die by fire. Then I would not say, no, 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 let's pray for him that he will repent. That's the one that will have been joining you to pray that, no, now, let's not be that wicked. Let's not be that, you know, uh, vengeful. Let's temper this, our judgment with some mercy. But eventually he will repent. I will have joined hands with you. But if it's like, uh, what do I do? What do you do? You know what to do now. You go and meet him there. Nonsense. I think we'll have drawn some red lines ahead of time. That this one, now no go area. That kind of thing. If you will get that boldness. Okay, what are you saying? Say, sir, let's not just worry about this thing. Hmm? No need to negotiate. Sir, if your life depended on it, I wouldn't give you. If the destiny of Nigeria depended on it, I wouldn't give you. So, sir, is there another thing? And for your information, the worst you can do is make me fail. You can't do any other thing. You can't kill me. You can't say I'm the one that, that killed um, John F. Kennedy. You can't say so. Or that you're not going to say that when a bachelor died, I was the one that shot him from this. You can't. The worst you will do is what? I will fail. And when I fail, the worst that will happen is that I will leave the university without a certificate. But most of the time, what will happen is I will just take the course again next year. So, sir, I am not going to be careful to discuss this matter with you. I'm not going home to go and think about it. If I think about it, God will punish me. So hear it now, sir. Sir, that's the only thing I have to tell you. However, let me just borrow some judgmental anointing. God will punish you. <laughs> tell a man like that, eh? Let me tell you what will happen. Most natural men will retreat. The ones that will not retreat will die. Uh, if, you, if you come with, I see that kind of attitude, I say, oh boy, okay, let's do experiments. If you want see miracle, I'll quote scripture for you. Go and meet him, say, Thus will Babylon go down and not rise again. <laughs> what did you say? When you get home, you'll find out. That thing that's not making you think will turn into cooked indomie. <laughs> For the next two years, let those who have understanding understand. Yeah, yes, Nonsense. Some things are not temptation. Honestly, this is how I've been since I was a young man in Bristol. I said, why is it a temptation? Are you afraid to fail for the sake of righteousness? Are you afraid not to graduate? I mean, you said, have a bragging point. They have not shot you for Christ. They have not put a knife to your head to, for Christ. Just certificate for Christ. Let me tell some people. This life, eh? 
In case you didn't know before, wealth, progress, promotion is not in any human being's heart. It's not even a, it's not a result of a certificate. There are people that God must fail them so that they can prosper. Was it this boy? If I don't fail him, this certificate will not let him progress. So he sends that man as a temptation so that you'll be promoted different ways. First, for standing for righteousness, in heaven you are promoted. Then he has removed the, the thing that will have been an obstruction between you and what he really wanted you to do in life. They asked one man, you're not educated at all. You might even go to school. He's in the UK. Not a Christian story, just a general story. And he became a multi-millionaire. So they said, what if only you had gone to school? We are wondering what you will have become. He said, no, I will have been a janitor. They said, how? He said, because the day I went to look for work, I got a job as a janitor. They didn't give me because I couldn't sign my name. So they brought the papers and said, sign. They realized that he was so illiterate, he couldn't even sign an agreement to work. So they apologized to him and said he had to leave. So because he could not write, he didn't get a job as a janitor. So he went behind and began to trade. He began to do small business here and there. Over time, this, is, this was in, um, this is in um, England. Or, or the UK, anyway, don't know which of the nations in there. This was in the UK. True story. No, it really happened to somebody. So over years, he became a multi-millionaire in the pounds. So they asked him, what? Oh, oh, what if you knew how to read and write? If only you were literate. Ah, I would have been a janitor. I hope you are getting my point. Listen, some things are not supposed to be temptations. Back to the story of Asa. Asa was tempted and he fell for it and he got results immediately. But what did, what did um, Anani now say to him? Sorry, I've closed that portion. Let me, just give me a moment. Let me get back there. He said to him, because you have relied on that king and not on the Lord, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubim, that's the Libyans, what you call Libyans now, an immense army with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support. This is why I like in James. So. He said that he may show himself strong. You know, that English is incisive. It cuts to the quick. <laughs> cuts deep into the heart. That he may show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are completely his. He said, you have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. Many of those successes only ignite wars in our lives. It didn't say war, wars. Financial wars, emotional wars, you know, health wars, marital wars. A man that will have been at peace with his wife breaks through, will suddenly create tension in the family. He will still be giving testimonies of how he broke through not done that was when breakdown came into the home. From now on, you will surely have wars. Wars you did not know existed. I wanted to tell that those when you were saying it, I felt sorry for them. I wished I could tell them. They don't do like that. No, these days I have realized it. A lot of people don't know the meaning of I made an agreement. They don't know what it means to say I made a promise to somebody. They don't know the meaning of I assured him. We signed a contract. They don't know the meaning. People are, they will go <laughs> looking for how to escape. I've why I'm talking about all of this is a continuation of what we said with it last time. We are going to pray again and determine that we will fight to be faithful. Amen. Yes. Faithfulness said, dwell in the land and do what? Cultivate faithfulness. It's something you do deliberately. So that, listen, you know, all of you know where we are. The, the company that owns this plaza, I was talking to the owner of the company, the boss, the big man who founded this company. One day, when in his office, he said, because he has learned as a Christian that if he gives out a word, he can't alter it. 
So before he advertises these buildings that are for sale, he will have factored in everything. He said once the adverts go out, no matter what happens in the economy, he can't change the price. Then he said he can't, he, will, he, he said the first time he built, remember Better Estate? He said that was his experience. He said he lost money. He said since then he had learned the lesson. By the time they went to the next estate, the price difference was quite marked. He explained the reason. He said, I had to put allowance for inflation. Put allowance. He said, because once I advertise, I can't change it. He said, I will have sworn to my heart. He said, I can't change it. Too. He said, so I put everything in place to make sure I don't find myself in that kind of situation where I want to start changing words. Because many, of course, you know, they start selling before they start building. So once people deposit money, he said, that's it, I'm committed. He said, so I do all my calculations, check everything. Once we give out the word and people start paying, that's it. We are in it. But people just be like, ah, because you see it every day. Ah, you know, go walk home. That time we will be give you that price. Ah, no, we don't know that it's going to be like this. And they start setting their destiny. They start church changing their destiny. Let me say something to you about God, which scares me about him. Sometimes I will look at God and say, Baba God, why are you like this? I can almost hear the Spirit telling me that that's the only way I can relate with people. Otherwise, there will be no relationship with anybody. That bank you are asking me to make people perfect before I can relate with them. No, it doesn't work like that. What am I trying to say? You will be misbehaving, and God will be loving you. He won't say anything. But the area of misbehavior will never be blessed. That's what I'm going to say. There's a lifestyle you will have. There's a principle by which you operate your life. It caps you permanently. God will never say anything about it again. You will struggle against that glass ceiling that's over your head. You will never be able to break it. And that's why it upsets me the way pastors preach many times. You will say to God, this year I will break through. God said, I never say you shouldn't break through. What I said, what is the reason why there's a glass ceiling? that you've been banging your head against for the last five years and it's not breaking. That's what you should be asking me. And he said, they have healed the heart of the daughters of my people slightly by saying, peace, peace, where there is no peace. I hear pastors all the time give, you know, solutions to people's troubles. And I'm like, it doesn't work like this. You will not plant a special seed. Listen to me. 99, 9,999 times out of a thousand that you hear that, don't answer anybody. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. 9,999 times out of 10,000 times you hear that, don't answer the preacher. I don't care whether he's a prophet or not, don't answer him. Tell him, say, okay, Pastor Banks, I should answer you. That is a special seed, is not what I need. Say, so if you want to raise money, raise it honestly. Don't tie it to my needs. Maybe one day God should give us the opportunity for us to raise money. So we can do it honestly. When I want to raise money, if I want to raise money, you know what I will do? I will say, please, brother, I want to raise money today, and you really want to give it. If you don't give it today, you don't love me. That's all I will do. Don't worry, I don't think I'll ever do it, so let's leave that side. No need to deceive myself. <laughs> because there are things I know is there's nothing, there's nothing unrighteous about it. I can announce to you that, please, if I've been a blessing to you, I want to build a house. If you want to see me at the back to help me, meet me outside. There's nothing wrong with it. Is it by force? So it didn't work. Why am I not doing it here? I don't even know. I was have been begging me to do this once in a while. <laughs> not exactly like that. It didn't say it like that. And they just used to laugh about some things. They said, ah, it's happened now before. No, so now. They said they, they know how to arrange these things. <laughs> just put in work in charge of the young men. Committed the progress of the gospel. <laughs> no, you see, sometimes there are easier ways to do, easier ways to do this. Thing. I've, I've, I've done that one in churches before. They say, please we'll raise money. I say, raise money. I say, it's not hard. I say, brethren, I was told to raise money. I'll just say it like that. <laughs> one day I finished like that in one church, one bro. He said, hey, banky, you are too real. I said, ah. I don't want to die. This is not about being real. <laughs> I don't want to die now. Me, I go be lie with the word of God. In fact, I want, as I'm going home, I'm going to check my shoulder. <laughs> no. I just if I say, hey, I, I, that's how I do my things. I will say, 
You know, God has helped me with that. And I'm teaching many preachers, learn it. When there was MC at the program, when, I, when we lose, he said I should be their MC. It was medical students and doctors program. They came together. Big program. So I point that they now whispered to me that, please, oh, um, some, the next event was not ready. So that there's something, we have to do something new. Like what? So maybe we can be singing praise. I said, praise God because you are not ready. You're not serious. So I announced to everybody, I said, please, they are not ready. They said we should praise God, but I will never need praise because people are not ready. So everybody sit down and let's wait for them. They were looking at me. I said, who's now wait for you? <laughs> they were looking at me. I said, no, 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 no. I know they play with you. Jamie, you are not ready, Abby. Let's tell everybody that the next event is not ready. Not, not the right now, brethren. I think we should just stand up and begin to worship God. Go with slap somebody. <laughs> they had never seen somebody like me before. I told the whole, so we now came to an agreement. What do we do? Do we want to stroll while they are getting ready? Or we sit and be greeting them and they say, okay, let's be greeting each other while they are getting ready. And I said, let's worship God. I feel the anointing in this place. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we slap with the backhand. You get home, you know why your joy is just aching. Now, divine slap. The Lord is good. Listen, tell the pastor, you don't need to lie to collect money from us. Tell us the truth. We are good people. We are God's people. If you say, brethren, they want to eject us from this building, we will not be able to hold church next Sunday. Please, brethren, if God has blessed you, come, bring money. If you're a pastor, say it like that. And tell the people that if you don't bring money, eh? And they eject us. I will pray against you. It's honest. Whether the prayer will work or not, it's a different matter. <laughs> Say it honestly. Stop telling people that I have a feeling God wants to roof the life of somebody today. <laughs> oh, my My spirit is saying roof, 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 roof. <laughs> roof, 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 roof. <laughs> it's not necessary. He said, They have healed the hearts of the daughters of my people slightly. Saying peace, peace, when there is no peace, prophets have to be careful that they don't get up and be declaring peace where there is none. I was saying, listen to this. Anywhere you are getting it wrong in your spiritual life, in your, you know, the soul, in your spirit, things you are not handling correctly, it has capped you somewhere. Didn't you hear? Some people can abuse them and go to all they want. But didn't you hear when he wanted to build the refinery, he put $7 billion of his own money down. Not money he borrowed. You don't know that is doable? And God can do it for anybody. Let me tell you something about God. When you obey him, it's for your own good. Let me say what I said before. Let me say it again. Temptations are called temptations because they are tempting. So, remember that story about come and take a contract and they give you a week to your wedding that has to be on your wedding day? So that day they were discussing. I said, what kind of foolish discussion is this? You guys don't know what's at stake here. It's not money that's at stake. It's integrity. God is testing whether he will ever make you president. He's testing whether he ever give you two oil blocks. He's testing whether he'll ever make, you know, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook buy up your company for $3 billion. That's what he's testing. He's testing whether he will call Bill Gates and say, my son in Nigeria is doing something. I wanted to make him an offer, and I want you to offer him $1.5 million. And Bill Gates won't know why he woke up one day, suddenly decided that he needs something. And he's the only company that's doing this in Nigeria. Let's negotiate with them. And you'll think it's negotiate with Americans. You offer $1.5 billion before you know what's happening. And you will say, done. They will think finish paying you for the less they could have offered you $200 million and you would have been happy. It's the Holy Spirit moving. But it's testing you. You think it's about wedding. I remember one foolish young woman that was speaking. He said, listen, it's only your wife you owe. I said, no, you owe God too. 
His own thinking is, ah, once you hammer, your wife will forget. What about your friends who put down, who rearrange their programs to travel from different parts of the world to come and be at your wedding to honor you? What God is saying that you never have honor again. You have money, but you never have honor. You don't realize it. People don't know what's been tested. When he told that story, I said somebody did that. Human beings are foolish. You know, a young man working for my wife told her she wanted to resign. And when she told me, I said, but I thought you guys signed a contract for a certain period. I said, yes, I told him as much. But I even gave him an offer that just wait for this particular period, then I'll let you go. I'll free you from your obligation. The guy said, no, she's not seen from his own angle. My wife said, what do you mean your own angle? We had a negotiation, we had a, an agreement. It's written, it's signed. When she told me, I said, give me his number. I called him. I said, you're a Christian. I said, so I will tell her not to pursue your, your own matter legally. I will leave you to God, to God to judge. Call me in two years. Let's see how blessed you have been. The idiot said I would think about it. You know, I looked and said, why can't people have sense? It would have been better if I said to you, no go better for you. It would have been better. Yes. I said, I leave you in the courts of God to judge. You have broken an agreement. And he said, I will think about it. I said, think about what? I looked and said, human beings. Why are we this foolish? Why are we this foolish? Why don't we have sense? I said, listen, please, you must understand. Please, this is not a curse. Please, it's a warning. I said this since not because I'm angry with anybody, because it pains me that young people have no sense. They have no teaching. They have no instruction. I said, you don't understand what you have done. You have said to God, my signature will never be reliable. So if you sign it on a marriage certificate, it will not hold. I said, what's wrong with people? If you sign it on a hundred million dollar deal, it will not hold. Because you said to God, my signature means nothing. I teach medical students. Some of the lectures I give them towards the end when they are in my class is on forensics. One of the lectures I always give is that when you become a doctor, guard your signature like mad. My friend in America said, number one reason American doctor, Nigerian American doctors have problems is because of Nigerians in America. They don't know they are not in Nigeria. They don't want to go to work. They go and collect six certificates, all kinds of things. And the ones who are new, who don't know, who is signed, a lot of them have lost licenses because of signatures. Doctors have gone to jail for nothing more than somebody came to tell them, please, I don't want to, I'm not feeling very well. Please, sir, can you give me an excuse, excuse this certificate? And they just sign, they are not thinking about it. They give it. I have one in mind. They just give it to somebody. Your signature is very powerful. So, he didn't know the person was supposed to show up in court, and he's looking for how he won't go to court. So his lawyer filed that paper. The police got angry. They picked up the matter, asked the doctor, you gave the certificate? He said, yes. Where is proof he came to hospital he didn't have? Threw him in the cell. Conspiracy to obstruct justice. So I tell my son, I said, once you collect the certificate, uh, the, uh, the registration, medical doctor, guard your signature. I even read an article long ago. Told, he said, listen, don't even witness a will. No, the, the wills have to be, somebody has to sign as witness. He said, if you're a doctor, don't, avoid it. Your friend prepares a will, he says sign. He said, don't sign. Go and get a friend who's an engineer, who's an accountant, who's anything, a businessman, a preacher, anything. Get them to sign. He said, why shouldn't you sign? He said, because if they ever have to contest that will, your signature is proof of the man's mental health. Even though he did not intend that. He said, it was witnessed by a doctor. If he was not in the right mental health, he would have known. So that article said, guys, don't witness important documents if you're a medical doctor. 
Signatures are important. That's the story I'm telling with all of these things. So you see, children of God appended recklessly. Make agreements and come tomorrow and say, oh God, you know, go work. I looked at that young man that day. I said, do you know why I'm talking to you? Because the first day I met you, you told me you listened to me that you're a Christian. I said, it's forbidding that for Christians to drag people like you, other Christians, to court. I said, but doesn't mean God doesn't judge. God says, I will take up the matter myself. When you told the story, just now we're praying that these people said, God has opened the door that we have been praying for. I feel like I said, no, it's a temptation. Jesus came to save the world. It appears like he didn't come, he came to do the will of the Father. The Father was saving the world. But let's, just, let's assume he came to save the world. Satan offered him the world. Common sense would have said what? Take it. But there was a cost. What was the cost? Bow and worship. Breakthrough has come. There's a cost. Dishonor your word. Break your agreement. Something you swore to. Don't stand by it. That is the cost of your breakthrough. You have entered by a wrong door. My initial plan was that we were going to prophesy over the year, but I've not been able to do that much. This year shall be well with me. Listen to me, it's already guaranteed shall be well with you. Amen. The assignment the Holy Spirit has now given me is remove the reasons why it doesn't go well with people. Remove the reason why it does not go well with people. Remove the reason why it does not go well with people out of your life. And do it. You know, there's something the scripture says. It says, go and deliver yourself. And that's one scripture I want to bring out. It was talking in a particular context. He said, have you stood as shorty for somebody? He said, go and what? Deliver yourself. Don't give sleep to your eyes. Now, that devotion, that dedication, that zeal to be delivered is what I'm trying to pick on. When Jesus said, if your, if your eye causes you to stumble, remove it. If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. We've discussed many times over years that is it literal? What did it mean literally or it was figurative? Then the Lord gave me understanding. Say, said, listen, it is actually literal. Is literally literal. He meant it literally. However, he didn't expect people to literally go around removing their eyes, even though the statement he made was literal. What he was just saying is that you will find other means to solve that sin if you knew it will remove your eye. I don't know whether you're getting my point. There are many other ways. I mean, I like one thing Mary Kay Ash said, then her husband was a terrible smoker. She tried to persuade him to stop it never worked. Then she realized that the man loved her very much. Then one day she realized that, and she was reading, and saw that your cigarette smoking does not affect you alone, but it affects your loved ones, what they call secondhand smoke. So she left the article, knowing that her husband would always read whatever she was reading. The man came up one morning, looked at it, read it, saw that she was, he was hurting his wife all these years that he's been smoking heavily. So that was the day he stopped smoking. A man who had used all kinds of methods, he couldn't stop. That day, many times there are motivations, there are hidden pockets of energy in us that we will use if we had the right motivation. So if, they, if you need your eyes will go, or your hand will go, you'll be amazed at what you can stop. That's what Jesus was saying. Was it literal? Yes. But what does he assume? You don't have to get there. But if you know that we will cut this hand off, and I've heard of, many of you were here two years ago, that is like our program we had the year before, before not this last one, that our ministers will submit and then our end of year program. When Pastor Peter told the story, okay, was he here? He told the one where he so to. Okay, he was not here. Anyway. I think it was in Sokoto because he and I were also ministered side by side in Sokoto. About a preacher who had a funny habit. Great evangelist. 
or apostle, let's put it like that. But Africans used to corrupt him. When he goes to a whole great revival in a place, they will give him a wife. Literally. So God removed his eyes. Both of them. And told him ahead. I'm going to take both of your eyes away. You won't see women again. Not remove his anointing, remove his eyes. Jesus was not joking. He didn't tell us the name of the man. He said, great man. God said, eh? So that's how you want to do it. You are feeling like David, Abby? Or like Solomon? God said, no, Allah. Because I kept quiet for David. It means I'll keep quiet for you. God said, maybe it's because you are seeing the girls, have you? Plucked both of them out neatly for him. So I'll leave your voice. I'll leave the anointing. Continue the work. Did he give the eyes back? He never did. Please, let me just go back again and warn people something. You don't want to cross this our father off. As he's loving, you'll be enjoying it. If he brings koboko, his koboko is terrible. He stinks badly. The only good side about his koboko is that if you will correct yourself, he can heal you. He said he has hurt us, he has wounded us, he will heal us. But please, why do you have to be wounded? Why do you have to be wounded? You know, he wounded Israel so much. At the point that he told Israel, I look at your whole body, he said, there's no place I have not yet flogged. <laughs> it's everything is wounds and wells and bruises, which I afflicted, though. I inflicted upon you. He doesn't get tired of it, though. Just to get Israel to repent. I see people play with destiny every day. And you look. <laughs> you know, our brother that worked with the man I was telling you about, I said, makes an agreement. You know who I'm talking about. I just want to put it on record here. You know how one day I went to preach. A bank organized a program. I told the story you know, before. And the original manager contacted me where he knew my wife, called my wife, please, can I get to your husband? My wife told me, he told me about it, so I agreed to see him. So I should come and speak for them that the Alga Pata Pata, the MD said, they wanted the preacher to bless them during their retreat, the whole region. I said, no problem. So I went. And then they had a businessman also who came to speak. And that's the man who owns his property. That was the first day I met him. So as he, he didn't know who I was. So they introduced me, our, our guest today. He heard my name. He said, oh, you are Pastor Banky? I said, yes, sir. He shook my hand very firmly. Now listen to the story. He said, so so and so person told me about you. I said, he said, that is one young man that I have vowed must work for me. He said, because I don't encounter them like that often. This our brother was working in a particular you know, finance company, and they were funding a business project he was doing. So they used to meet, he was a young, very young man. So he was not telling the man, you know, the cost of gist, that he wants to actually leave that company, all right? He wants to leave the company and maybe leave town. Because NYC brought him to Enugu. So the man said, so why are you not leaving? He said, I can't leave now. Listen to this one. The man said, why not? He said, because they are going through a difficult patch. He said, he, felt, he thinks it's terrible for him to walk out on them now that they need people like him. He said, so he's going to continue working for the company until they stabilize. When he sees that they are not doing OK, he will now put in his resignation and leave. And the man was looking at him like this. So he asked himself, who's teaching you? That was the question he asked the man. He said, who's your pastor? Because that day he told me, he said, I asked myself, who is teaching this young man? So he used to ask me, who's your pastor? So in the course of this, my name came up. OK, Pastor Banky, you're talking about this. So the man said, eh, I must meet this your Pastor Banky one day. So the day he met me, he said, oh, you are the one teaching them these things. He said, you don't hear these things like from the mouth of young people anymore. That day he made up his mind. This guy, you are not leaving this city. You must work with me. I know the, the man, you know, say plotting. Okay, so the time when you want to come out, don't reach. <laughs> <laughs> 
he was shadowing him all the time. He said, to find a, a faithful man, who can find? He said, no, I, this one, I won't let him go. Hmm. This is, I see, faithfulness, eh? to find it. People are unfaithful. In fact, that word is unfaithful is not good. They are wicked. They are wicked. Some people do work for you. When you, you will discover two years later they did it bad. A socket is screw on the wall will come up by itself. What? This socket, I'm not using it now. Why did it come off? <laughs> the man knows the screw is short. <laughs> but because the supervisor is not looking, he goes scratch. As long as he's standing on the wall. In his heart, he knows it will stand only for a short while. But by that time, I don't go. I'm, let me tell Christians. I'm not joking about this. I'm not because angry with anybody. I'm warning people. God will judge these things, though. There are those who will finish building their house. It will just collapse. And the only mercy God will give is that it will be on Sunday at 10 o'clock because they all go to church. And even the dog will have gone to chase a snake at one corner. Then the, <laughs> the house will come down completely because service will end at 11. Because they say, yeah, guys, pull it down where they are not there. The guy will come back to his street. He will look the house. Then he will turn. Madam, why are you turning? He said, I think I entered the wrong, wrong street. Oh. I said, this is the right street. He said, where is our house? <laughs> then he opened the gate. You see, it has crumbled behind the fence. You know, like I said, my initial plan was to declare this year it go good, this year it go well. God said, no, 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 no. Thank you, we know that one. What I need you to tell the people to declare is that this year, every hindrance I have put, I have put on the path of goodness, wellness, breakthrough, it must be removed. I will walk in faithfulness. I will be found faithful. I will walk it in integrity. He said, dwell in the land and do what? Cultivate faithfulness. It means you get up in the morning and say, okay, how do we do faithfulness today? What are the agreements we made yesterday? And listen, God will make sure some agreements hurt you. One day, my wife, I told you, I told you the story. When my wife used to sell clothing. One day, somebody wanted to buy a suit from her. So I told the person, these are the prizes. It's a wedding suit now. So, we need to buy it to me and my best man. They came selected, suit. My wife gave them an expensive suit for the price of a Chinese one. I doubled the price. She just made a mistake. She gave it to them. They paid. They took two. You know, if it's not one, Zev, you know. The after they left, like the following day, he said, my husband, something has happened. I said, what happened? So those guys that came to buy suits from me, I said, hey, I made a mistake. The one I gave them is not the one they paid for. I said, I gave them the wrong price. What do I do? I said, is there a lock? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? He said, there's nothing you can do. Is it the man's fault? Yeah. Oh, by the way, he has won the suit. They have done the wedding. What will I do? I said, nothing. But she couldn't let it go like that. He said, he called the man and said, see the mistake. You took expensive suit and paid cheap price. The man said, what should I do? He said, nothing. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she was, it's in pain now. He said, I just want you to know. So that when you are wearing it, you know what you are wearing. <laughs> So that one you are wearing, because, you see, some people say, what if, see, I don't want to get into that now, but that one, the issue was that the people on the other side, they didn't, they didn't play any way. They were open, this is what we want, and they, there was no mistake, really. It was later on she discovered the mistake, which was not their mistake. 
She has signed the agreement technically. They are paid, they are, they are gone. You can't hold them responsible. On that time like that, somebody imported toys. And then somebody now linked her, the woman with my wife that, please, madam, they said that you market, do marketing and all of that. She said, yes. This is not today. This was 25,000 naira of life 14 years ago. One toy computer for kids. So I said, all right, no problem. So she sold, so one person she sold to now came. Said the team developed the fault after a day. Ah. So of course, immediately she called the, the person who supplied and said, please help me market. And that one was talking up and down, you know, like, talk, go here, talk, go there. Eh. When they brought it now, it was working, you know, those kind of stories. Again, my wife called, I wasn't home that day. So she told the person that, please, return it. When my husband comes, I'll have him look at it. And um, if, let's see what he can do. So I was there. I thought you said your husband was a doctor and a preacher. <laughs> she just laughed, said, you don't know my husband. Just leave that side. Of course, when I came back, she told me on the phone, I think I traveled. When I came back, I just had to look at, okay, I'm coming back in about two days. I'll look at it. And I said, well, what do I do meanwhile? I said, prepare the person's money. If I can't fix it, return the money first before you start discussing. But the other person, I said, the person who bought from you does not know the other person. That's why you're a middle man. You are, you, are mid, you are in the middle, sorry. Ha, ah, it was a hard one. That was it, she prepared mentally. If I can't fix it, I'm not the one importing toys. The thing has finished, it was a batch, it was gone. Can I replace it, I give you your money back. I came, I looked at this electronic device. When I saw what the fault was, I said, don't worry, they always have reset buttons, reset it. What did you say? So I started turning it up, upside down. Finally, I found one hole, took a pin, stuck it inside. The thing went down, boom, and then rebooted, bam, went to normal. But then it was a test. God knew I would fix it. All I needed to do was, I think I replaced some hidden batteries, and then just press a reset button, the whole thing reset back to factory setting, began to work normally. I was relieved not to have to cough up 25,000 naira in which he made less than 10% of something. And the other person was speaking story, eh, no now, when the thing came, it was not, I said, listen, the person who paid, do you even, do you even consider the person who coughed up 25,000, not, not of today. In today's scenario, you're talking like 75K to buy toys for the kids, and you just say, sorry. Now I said, bye, it's not my fault. <laughs> and you want God to continue blessing you. If you were going to get out of blessing you, yes. that's what I don't die. <laughs> Please, let's get to our prayer. Our prayer is that, Lord, this year, let's get to our feet. Faithfulness is my portion. Every obstruction to my progress, which is lying inside me, that's what I'm going to remove. Begin to pray. Please, that is the prayer. The prayer is not this year. This year is already good for you. Let me say to you, the year is good for you already. Amen. Say amen like you believe that. Amen. That thing is hanging over your head. It's hanging. God is just saying, please, every obstruction, every obstruction, every obstruction, remove it. Begin to remove it in prayer. Say, Lord, if I say things that are not true, this year, let lies not come from my mouth again, ever. There are different kinds of lies. There are lies you will use style to lie. You know it's not true, but you say it anyway. Say, Lord, this year, let me not say things that are not true. Let me not make promises I know I cannot keep. If I make, promise, make a promise, Lord, give me the strength. Give me the energy to keep it. Lord, help me to keep it. Even if I swear to my heart, I will not change. That is the grace I'm asking for this year. As I move up on in my business, that's the grace I'm asking for this year. As I go on in my business, that's the grace I'm asking for this year. That is the grace I'm asking for. That is the grace I'm asking for. That I will be a person of integrity. That I will be a person of faithfulness. That faithfulness will be my portion. That's the prayer you need to pray. Please, that's the prayer we are praying. Pray to the Lord. Cry as if you need to be delivered. Lord, deliver me from lying. Deliver me from being unfaithful. Deliver me from not fulfilling my promises. Deliver me from saying one thing and meaning another. Let me not be double, you know, how do I say this double-minded, double-tongued. I say one thing, but what I really mean in my heart is something else. I tell one person one thing, you know, I deliberately mislead, mislead people Why using the accurate words. It's, it's iniquity. Deliberately use, misleading people while using accurate words. We all do it. God will forgive us and we must stop it. 
Because they say, I don't want to lie. You know you have created deliberately a wrong impression. You know you created deliberately a wrong impression, yet you are defending yourself that there's nothing I said that's not true. I want you to pray as to deliver yourself. Those are the things that have been obstructing progress in our lives. Those are the things obstructing progress in our lives. Say, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from a lying tongue. Deliver me from an unfaithful heart. In the name of Jesus, every hurtful thing, every deceitful, disobedient thing that's in my heart, say, Lord, deliver me. That, those are the problems. Those are the problems. Those are the problems, oh, people of God. It is not to declare that this year shall be well with me. It is well with you already. But the things that bring on wellness is what we are handling. Say, Lord, let somebody's money not stay with me. They work for me. I have money to pay them. Let me pay them. I, I don't know why people just, I mean, somebody will work for you. Pay now. You can afford it. Ha. You want that used to make me laugh. People will be building their own house. They won't pay rent. As I, you want the house to stand. You are wicked. You have money to buy cement, buy steel rods. <laughs> Yet the landlord that gave you a house to stay, you will not pay him. You have been a house in the village. You know the truth? You are a thief. You are wicked. It's called wickedness. You are still in the bondage of iniquity. The goal of bitterness. Ah, say, Lord, deliver me. From being wicked to my fellow man, deliver me. From being wicked from my, to my fellow man, my fellow businessman, Jesus said, do unto others as you will want them to do unto you. Ha. Ha, this instruction is not clear. I want you to pray, say, Lord, from today, I will be a man, a woman of integrity. My word will be my bond. Everybody quickly open to Psalm 15. Psalm 15, I want us to read it together. Psalm 15. You know what Jesus said? Like what Paul said? He says, seeing that we have these promises, beloved, what do we do? Let's cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and of spirit. What do we do? We perfect holiness in the fear of God. We perfect holiness in the fear of God. We perfect holiness. We make sure that everything in us is holy. It's a deliberate thing we do. We work hard at it. We cleanse ourselves. We wash ourselves deliberately. How do we wash ourselves? By the washing of water with the word, the word of God. We take these words and read it over our lives. Say, my life, you will conform to this. That's what you are going to do. You say, my life, this is what you will conform to. You perfect holiness because that's what is hindering promises. Every year is my year of this, my year of this. Forget the year of this, it will, it will come to pass once everything is set. It will come to pass. Let's read this together. Psalm what? 15. Psalm 15. Are you there? Yes, sir. Now you are prophesying this over your own life. I'm prophesying this over my life. One, two, let's go. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. who may abide in your tent who may dwell on your holy hill, who walks with integrity and walks righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. He does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a reprobate is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord. 
He swears to his own heart and does not change. He does not put out his money at interest, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. I want us to read in a simple translation. Let me just read it out to us. In case some people are wondering what we are reading. Psalm 15 in New Living Translation, what we read just now is um, New American Psalm. That was what I was reading. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? He who lead, those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flag, uh, flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord. And keep their promises even when it hurts. Let me stop reading here. They keep their promises even when it hurts. They keep their promises even when it hurts. Please leave these words over your own life. You have a minute or two to do that. Just read them out to, you, to yourself. Begin to read them out. I will abide in the tent of the Lord. I will dwell on his holy hill. I will walk with integrity. Read it over your life. Don't, look, I want to hear you read over yourself. I will walk with integrity and I will walk righteousness. I will speak truth from my heart. From my heart. Oh, I like New Living Translation says, I will speak the truth from a sincere heart. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts. I will not slander with my tongue. I will not do evil to my neighbor. I will do unto others as I want them to do unto me. I will not take up a reproach against my friend. In my eyes, a reprobate person is despised. No matter how rich, because that is the problem. Nobody will, 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 will approve a reprobate person were it not for things like money. You take a picture with a criminal because he's rich and you're happy about it. <laughs> Say, Lord, not this year. The righteous ones in the land, they are my true heroes. They will be my true heroes. I will follow only righteous people, people that have a true testimony. Not admiring a drug dealer because he has big motor cars. People of questionable, you know, sources of wealth because they are rich. I admire them. Say, not anymore. I set the Lord alone, endlessly before me. Pray. Free yourself from the things that obstruct your blessing. It's with prayer. Remember we talked last time. You draw near to the throne of grace. There we will find power to do right. He said this here. Uh -huh. Declare these words over your life. If you have to put your hand over your head, do it. Look at that scripture. Tap your chest. Speak those words. I will not take advantage of anybody's lack to benefit from their, you know, from their troubles. That's what it means. Putting out his money at interest. And I will not take a bribe against the innocent. <laughs> people who do that, I feel sorry for them. The judgment on those people were very rapid. This year, Lord, I will not be shaken. Deliver me from doing evil. When the Lord said, pray like this, deliver us, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's what he was saying. We will not do evil. May we not do evil. May we not do evil. Say, Lord, let us not do evil. Deliver us from doing evil. Lord, this year I will dwell in the land. I will cultivate faithfulness. I will dwell in the land. I will cultivate righteousness. Please read those scriptures. That's Psalm 15 over your head, over your life. Meditate on it. Speak to yourself. Correct yourself with them. Correct your ways. If you have done any of these things, repent. Sometimes you may have to call somebody and say, I'm sorry, I did this to you two years ago. Yes, I'm serious about that. I'm not joking. It's not just about restitution now. It's about humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God. That is, you are saying to yourself, this, I will not do it again. So you pass yourself through pain. 
by calling somebody you, you know God, the Holy Spirit will remind you. And you know some people, <laughs> apostles, they want to just call and say sorry. God says, if it means pay, pay. If it means paying money, two years after, I pay the person. But I've said sorry now. Nonsense. It's very convenient. Lack of true repentance. Sometimes true repentance will hurt you. Yes, it will hurt you financially. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Ah, God is looking for faithful Christians. Oh. He's looking for faithful people. People he can rely on. Say, this Lord, you'll be able to rely. This year, Lord, you'll be able to rely on me. Say to the Lord. Not by my own determination. I'm not bragging like Peter. I'm saying, give me grace. I'm asking you, Lord, for grace. I'm asking you, Lord, for grace. I'm asking you, Lord, for grace. Quickly, open to the book of Daniel. No, first, Psalm 37. We're going to prove our lives again from Psalm 37. Before we go to what that, the testimony of Daniel. Now, we're all going to read together from verse 1 to verse 11. Then we'll take a few minutes and prove our lives with those lines. Are you ready? Psalm 37 from verse 1. Let's go. Do not fret before of evil doers. Do not envy us towards wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Dwell, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will do it. And He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as a noonday. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. For evil doers will be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked man will be no more. And you will look carefully for his place, and it will not be there. But humble will inherit the land, and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Amen. Amen. Eleven verses, you have two minutes. Please meditate over that, over your life. Give instructions to yourself from the scriptures. Tap yourself. Call your own name. Say, Banking, in 2022, you will not fret yourself because of evildoers. You will not be envious towards those who do wrong and seem to be prospering. Know for sure they will wither quickly like the grass and they will fade like the green herb. Banky, this is what will happen to you this year. You will trust in the Lord and a sign that you are trusting in God is be busy doing good. Please instruct yourself. This year, good will be my portion. I'm tired of saving for a future I have not yet seen. Let me do good today. Let me be generous and be ready to share. That was the instruction God gave to the Corinth, uh, to, 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 to Timothy, to the people. Paul wrote to him, instruct them to trust only in God, to be generous and ready to share. Say, that will be my portion. I will dwell in the land and I will cultivate faithfulness. I will make it a deliberate, deliberate practice. I will write down my business transactions. I will write down the promises I have made and I will be faithful in doing my portion. I will be faithful in fulfilling my promise. I will delight myself in the Lord. The Lord alone will be in front of me. I just want to be like Jesus. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to know him. I want to know him. I commit my way to the Lord. I trust also in him. I know he will do everything he has to do in my life. He will bring forth my righteousness as a light and my judgment as a noonday. My soul rests in the Lord and wait for him. Hey, there's no need to hurry. Quick money will not be a blessing to you. Banky, rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. How do you rest in the Lord? Do what you are supposed to do on a regular basis. How do you rest in the Lord? Obey his instructions on a regular basis. Set the Lord before you. Ah, that's what prayer is. We are praying to set ourselves aright. Enough of envying people. 
enough of bragging on you know people who are not straight in their ways because they are rich. Not anymore. I cease from anger and I forsake wrath. Anger with the president, being angry with the country, being angry with everything. I will not, be, I will not fret. I will not be anxious. I don't want to be led into wrongdoing because evil doers will be cut off. They may appear like they are prospering now. All the boys who do for one night, who do drugs, who kidnap people, they will be cut off. It is the word of the Lord. If we have released it into the air, they will be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit this country, this Nigeria, this land, they will inherit it. God will establish your business. Oh, I feel like prophesying to people this evening. God will establish you. He will make you great. He will make your children great. He will bless you beyond your imagination. Yes, he will, he will, he will, he will. He will bless you beyond your imagination. He will bless you beyond your imagination. Materially, he will bless you. Why? Because right now, you are committing your soul to him entirely. Continue the meditation, please. I just feel like doing that. He said, the humble will inherit the land, and they will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. I declare to all those who are praying this prayer today, you will inherit the land. Amen. You will have abundant prosperity. Amen. I say it again, you will inherit the land. Amen. And you will have abundant prosperity. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, this will make some people laugh. <laughs> One day you look at the light and say, so now you be this. And we are holding it like maybe 100,000 in cash. And then just drop it and forget it in the drawer. You hear what I said? Yes. Forget now, talk. You know, one day I told my wife, I said, people I say I don't prosper. She said, what do I mean? I will take a jacket I've not worn in some days. I will wear it and fill some in the pocket. I bring that 15,000. Ah. I said, eh? This was those days, oh. <laughs> I was in trousers included. I will take trousers. I just wear that. What's in the pocket? You bring it out. Ah, 5K. That was the day I opened the savings account. I said, apparently I have more money that I can spend because... <laughs> He said, first of all, you have become, no, no, he's not a millionaire, is he? Okay, let me tell you something about my life. God has been very good to me. My eye has never been haughty. My heart has never been proud. I have never involved myself in matters too difficult for me. I have never, one day one of my friends said, this one I want to get married, won't I buy a car? I said, did they vex buy a motor? <laughs> you go to the, 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 the car shop, say, see my wedding card. I would look at him and say, no, Nanda, I want to marry. It's good to have someone to drive down. Down to where? <laughs> the young woman has seen me. If I had used style to tell her how much money I was earning, now style, you know, there's a way you use style to say some things. So I saw one of my friends, I said, okay, you and I work in the same place. You know, the, you know, every, you know my moves. You know where I, go, where I don't go. This is about the only money I earn. Explain to me how I will buy a motor car from this motor, from this money. Eh, he even got angry. Eh, all the money you are giving, you have to stop. Ah! In my mind. And then, what happens to my future? Lack of faith. I looked at the guy and said, but, but why do people drink Panadol for somebody else? Said, the girl I want to marry has not said that, okay, if you don't get a motor, I'm not going to marry you. If I want there, I remember she wanted to go and do something. So, she was also stop seeing me in my friend's place. So, he not told the mom that place. Banky is with his friend, so I want to stop seeing him before I go. So, the mother now said, oh, is he going to take you there? Look at the mother. I said, does he have a car? <laughs> I remember very well. She even told me about the gist. And the two of them just laughed. They just laughed it over. He said, take me where? He came to. He doesn't have now. And they just laughed about it. And because I was waiting in my friend's place. And the mother just packed. She came down. I greeted her. And the woman drove off. So she was not telling me the conversation she had in the car. My mother was saying, whether you be the one to take me. They said, I asked her, take me where you, you get a motor to carry person. It was a joke. So we played over it. So why would I, people are not, they, you know, they, 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 they feel sorry for me. I have never, God, I give you praise, involved myself in matters too difficult for me. So you can imagine, so one day, <laughs> I went to a shop in Enugu, and I saw a new, Sony video cassette recorder, looking very nice. And you remember that in 2017,005. 
I told the guy to give me one. I just went and brought money and gave him. I told my wife, I brought you a new VC video cassette recorder. I said, thank you. Now, wow. You don't come far. So on that time, I'll bring out my trouser. I'll see 5K. I bring out my, because those are the ones I was in. <laughs> By the 15th, I have checked all the pockets by myself. <laughs> There was no chance in a million. <laughs> Listen, if I ever found money in my pocket on the 20th, a ho an angel put it there. <laughs> pocket that has gone over two times by myself. You know, <laughs> that was when it, you know, a time that I came out, just open it maybe. One day I'll just be checking for something. I just saw an envelope. Ah, check the envelope, open it. It's money that's inside. Sometime before, one day I, to I told my son, Thank you. <laughs> I have very funny children. They will make you laugh. I was just joking with him. I said, hey, see this envelope where I see for my this pocket, my, maybe my car or something. I said, I opened it and I saw crisp, crisp 1,000 rand notes, 30 of them, 30 pieces. He said, hey. I said, I don't know. I think somebody gave it to me. He said, hey, are you using it? <laughs> using the money. <laughs> no, honestly, that day, when I saw the money, I was surprised. I said, ah, where did this money come from? So I told my wife long ago, I said, no, 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 sweetheart, I think God has been kind. That I can forget money. That's what I'm talking about. Forget money. You don't know where I'm coming from. <laughs> Let me not start. I'm, I'm remembering now, I'm laughing. At the 15th of the month, I'm shaking. You know, there are pockets you tap. You will bring it out. You know, some, some money, they are soft and old. You can tap them, not feel them. It's all these new, new ones where they feel. And when you turn the pocket inside out, like police with a check, checkpoint. You don't see those <laughs> police with lots of checkpoints. <laughs> now, listen to my prayer for you. God will bless you so much, you will forget $100,000 in a drawer. Amen. And it won't be a big deal. It's not that you now go to church. Praise the Lord. I want to testify today that I forgot the 100,000. What is the big You forgot it last year too. At the end of the day, your son will ask you, Daddy, are you using it? Yes. It will happen to you. Amen. Can I just say this to you? God doesn't have a problem doing these things. Though. It's not effort on his part. He said, I, I dry up the sea with my breath. I cause water to flow in the wilderness. If it's prosperity, it's not a hard thing for the Lord. It's just that we, as human beings, we have made it the primary thing he's doing. It's not the primary thing. So he wants to solve the primary things first. And I, I perceive that many people today, they are solving with the Lord that primary thing. Amen. And after that, he will do good to you. Amen. Let's read one more. And then, I just feel like we'll prove ourselves with this story from Daniel chapter 6. And then we'll, we'll be out of here. It seemed good to Darius to appoint 120 satraps over the kingdom and they, that they should be in charge of the whole kingdom. Over these three commissioners, of whom Daniel was one, and over them, three commissioners, of whom Daniel was one, that these trust traps might be accountable to them and that the king might not suffer loss. Then this Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and satraps because he possessed an extraordinary spirit. And the king planned to appoint him over the entire kingdom. Then the commissioners and satraps began trying to find the ground of accusation against Daniel in regard to government affairs. But they could, not, but they could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption. In as much as he was faithful and no negligence or corruption was to be found in him. Do you hear what I said? Who wants to be like Daniel? Then take a minute and beg the Lord. Say, this is what I want to be like. This is the testimony I'm asking for. Not that you gave me a house. You can do that. But that's not what I'm asking for. Not that you made me rich. You gave me a husband. You gave me a wife. I know you can do these things. 
I'm asking for this testimony that the commissioners and satraps began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel. But they could find no ground because there was no evidence of corruption. He was faithful. He was faithful. And no negligence of corruption was to be found in him. Pray to the Lord. Say, Lord, this is what I'm asking you for. In 2022, this is what I'm asking you for. That I will be faithful. I will be dependable. I will be reliable. There will be no corruption in me. No negligence. No corruption. In the name of Jesus. No negligence. No corruption. In the name of Jesus. No unfaithfulness. No unfaithfulness. No lying. No cheating. No dishonesty. Lord, let me not, oh God, let me not profane your name. Let me not cause your name to be blasphemed among the Gentiles. In the name of Jesus, no sexual immorality. In the name of Jesus, no uncleanness. In the name of Jesus, no filthy words. No anger towards the government. Or pain and you no know, anger towards the country. None, Lord, but faith. Lord, let me be a contributor of faith into my environment. This year, not only will I be faithful in all that I do, but I'll be full of faith in all that I do. Not only will I be faithful, but I'll be full of faith. You know, there's a difference between the two. Being faithful, being dependable, doing your work at the right time, meeting your promises, your obligations, but being full of faith towards God. Being full of faith that God indeed will be your rewarder. Lord, that is what I'm asking for. And right now, I'm not asking for money. Thank you, we supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But Lord, I'm asking you, make me like Daniel. Give me a testimony like that of Daniel. Pray. From the bottom, you see, if you ask God, he will do it for you. He said, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Jesus said, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? It is that Holy Spirit we're asking for today. A spirit that is holy. A character that is holy. A spirit that is holy. A spirit that is pure. That's what we're asking for. Lord, cleanse my mouth. The angel flew and took a tongue, with a tongue, took coal from the altar and touched Isaiah's mouth. He said, this has touched your mouth and your iniquity has been removed. The nonsense talk has gone away. The wrong spirit has gone away. Say, Lord, the way you purified the tongue of Isaiah, purify my tongue today. Say to the Lord, purify my tongue. He said, one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his right hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. And he touched my lips with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven. Say, Lord, touch my lips. Touch my heart. Touch my heart. Touch my mind. Without burning coal, taken from the altar of heaven. Begin to give the Lord thanks. Say, Lord, thank you. I've been washed. Thank you. I've been made clean. Thank you. I've been washed. Thank you. I've been made clean. Thank you. I have been washed. I have been made clean. Oh, Father, I thank you. I receive it by faith. I receive it by faith. Thank you. Every hindrance, every hindrance is removed. Every hindrance is removed. <laughs>